Our next guest is a novelist, director, and Oscar-winning screenwriter who also finds time to write superheroes. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Creator of the acclaimed graphic novel, The American Way, here he is. John Ridley. How are you? Nice it's to see you It's such a pleasure again. to chat with you here at Comic-Con. I mean, we've talked a lot about movies, about your shows over the years, and now after 10 years, you're back and you're writing a follow-up to The American Way. It's really very special for anyone to say 10 years later, um, not only that they want to revisit it, but they're putting out an anniversary issue of the first series. Um, it's an opportunity to revisit characters, not only ideologically 10 years older, but, but I'm 10 years older. How would I change? How would I think differently? How do I think differently? So to be able to infuse that in the characters, give them a real sense of reality, very, very special. So going back to when you released the first arc of The American Way, why was writing a comic something that you really wanted to do? Were you a big fan of comics and inspired grew by Grew up going to the stores on New Comic Book Day, um, going through the various racks, pulling them, collecting them, having them fill up my, my bedroom when I was a kid. But the things that were very special to me and that I really honestly remember are those early times when I saw heroes who looked like me and saw stories that pushed the boundaries and reflected that the world, the world that we live in. So to have the opportunity to write things that are just interesting and fantastic and wonderful, that's special. But in a space now where we see such an urgency to have stories that are really reflective and to see audiences embrace them the way they did, for example, with Wonder Woman. Right. Uh, just Black Panther coming up Black as Panther well, coming yeah. up, you know, it's just, it, it, it's a, a whole new uh, environment. Uh, it, it, it's about time in many ways. So to be able to revisit the American way, but with heroes that are about change and about positivity and about our better angels that's what's so great about the yeah American what way. inspired you to want to come back and write it again because like you said you've changed a lot the world has changed a lot in 10 years and the comic space has I you know it, it honestly it's not so much about what I wanted to do I was very fortunate to have an imprint like vertical that's part of DC to look at my body of work and say if you want to tell that story we'll support you um, so I'm happy that people liked it in any regard but it does feel nice knowing that you've accomplished enough things that who you are uh, is reason for people who may not have known the first series to go, oh, well, it's him. What is he saying this time? What is it about? What are these stories? I'm just fortunate to be here and to be here. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, what are some of the uh, types of conversations you want to start with this new, you know, revisiting the American way? It takes place a couple decades later as yeah, well. The, first the characters one are back. was set in the 1960s. Right. This is the 1970s. And it's about responsibility. It's about consequences. It's about our own actions catching up with us. You know, um, 10 years ago when I was a much younger person, you know, you do things and you're not really, you don't worry so much about, well, what is that going to mean later? And I know 10 years from now, I'm going to look back at this age and go, man, if I'd only done things differently. That's what this story is about. These characters, 10 years later, how is the past catching up to them? And being mindful of the past we create, because we never know when that past is going to show up in our future. So the first time you wrote The American Way, or The, Amer the American Life, um the American way, I'm losing my mind. At Comic-Con, we have so many interviews. Uh, you only had eight issues. Yeah. Why did you only do an eight issue arc? And do you want to extend it longer going forward this time? I'm always, you know, if you know anything about me and my writing, whether it's television, I do limited series. Um, I think a little like, John Ridley goes yeah. a long way. You know, eight issues, even though it's a limited series, the amount of work and planning that these men and women do on a daily basis to make these comic book works, you, one has no idea. So for me going into it, eight was about, honestly, in terms of planning it, putting it together, making sure it came out on time, that was about the right number. This go round, it's six. And I also think that's, without having filler, it, the story sustains itself. Every moment, every series, uh, every issue has its own urgency. Would you want to see this story make its way to another medium like film or TV or why do you think comics is the right place to tell this story? I have to say I'm very, very fortunate because I, I write and make movies. Yeah, I write you can and do it all if you want to. I, well, if, if I'm fortunate enough to find partners to support me, I, I, I can. So I don't feel as though if this doesn't cross over, this is my only chance. I really want to do this because I do love graphic novels. I do love comic books. If somebody came to me and said, oh, this is terrific. We want to take it another step. Um, having worked in those spaces, I see the value of articulating them in a more physical way. But to be able to come here and, uh, you know, I wrote 
the American way while I was shooting guerrilla, while we were shooting American crime. So for me, it was it was it was a nice way. It was cathartic to be able to go back to my hotel room and just work on a graphic novel and say this has got to work on its own. Um, but if we had the opportunity, uh, who wouldn't want to make it real? As a consumer of comic books, how do you think the industry has changed in the past 10 years to maybe, you know, see more stories like this as yeah. a part of the, the you know, business? And or do you think that audiences are more welcoming of this type of story now? Well, to the first part of your question, yeah, I think the industry as a whole is much more reflective across the board in terms of trying to represent the world we live in. Um, people of different backgrounds, of different orientations, uh, you know, there's so many women who are buying comics. It, it, obviously, I'm not alone in saying Wonder Woman, it's about time. Right. So we see that, but also when you see the anticipation for Black Panther, uh, the reception for Wonder Woman, you know the audience, and I mean the wider audience, is catching up to what comic book readers have known for a long time, that this is a world of possibilities. And everybody implicitly is invited to be part of it Explicitly, I think we who can need to be, do a better job of making sure that anybody who wants to tell stories has a seat at the table. Now, I've been bugging you about this every year that I see you at TCA. You do have a superhero TV series that you've been slowly working on. It's very secretive. Um, I'm curious, and it's clear when we've talked about it before, you want to find the right story to tell before you yes. make it. And I'm curious if working on The American Way, this new arc has changed at all, maybe the type of superhero story you'd want to tell if you brought a superhero to the small screen. Well, I, I have been working on something with, with Marvel, and it is, you know, a rare opportunity to work with them. And what we're trying to achieve is very, very specific and very different than things I might do were it just me right. trying to tell a very particular story. Um, part of the, the issue is, you know, they are, are, they are so good at universe building. And for me, it's not just about writing a script and walking away from it or directing one episode and walking away. Um, you know, I write, direct, a show run. I really want to be part of it. So timing right. has been an incredible issue. Um, but I think we are, we're still working on it. It's not gone away. And if I had the opportunity to tell that story, I'd be one of the most fortunate people around. You have been such a conscientious storyteller of being really aware of like the world we live in and, and bringing that to life and challenging viewers across all mediums. And I'm curious, is that something you're really looking to do with this series if you make it? Like, is it going to be something that oh, yeah, as much absolutely. as it's superheroes is and similar to American I, I cannot say enough about Marvel just at the inception saying, as you choose to populate this world, populate it the way you want. Populate it in a way that is reflective. Don't, don't feel as though even though some of the characters may have some canon, don't feel as though they need to look or be exactly like awesome. what an audience may expect because they have a sense of it in the back of their mind. Yeah, well, I'm gonna keep bugging you about it every time I see you until, I hope I can until give there's you an a announcement. Scoop. I hope I, I can give you I just want you to personally. know that we remain really excited about this prospect. We're so excited about the American Way coming back as well. Thank you. You're one of the busiest men in Hollywood, so we really appreciate you taking the time to come Are and chat kidding? with us you at Comic-Con. You all have been amazing supporters. I deeply appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. It's wonderful to be here, and I really do hope I can give you, if not on the Marvel Project, <laughs> something that you can turn to your audience and go, <laughs> we got it first and we got you it right. You did, you did. You got everyone hyped for the American way coming back. John Ridley, thank you so much for Absolutely. taking the time. Thank you. Everyone, we're going to be back with a lot more from Comic-Con soon, so stay tuned.